ever tried to get a good shot of like a distant galaxy with your camera, yeah. but to those pin sharp stars, you just get blurry streaks. Oh yeah, it's frustrating. It's a bummer. You think you've got a, all the cameras set? You might even have a star tracker like the Ben Ro Polaris to help with the Earth's rotation. Right. But then the software. Yeah, the software can really hold you back. Yeah. And that's actually a perfect lead in to this deep dive. Okay. You sent us a ton of info on this open source project, the Alpaca Ben Ro Polaris right. ABP for short. And let me tell you. Everyone in astrophotography is buzzing about it. So we're basically talking about taking this star tracker, yeah. which a lot of people use, and using free software to make it way better. Yeah. It's like taking something that's already pretty good and giving it a supercharge. Like, imagine using planetarium software like Stellarium, mm -hmm. and you click on, say, the Andromeda Galaxy right there on your screen. Okay. With ABP, your Benro Polaris will actually move your camera to get it perfectly in the frame. So that means no more messing around with joysticks in the dark. Exactly. That's really cool. But it sounds like ABP does a lot more than just make things easier, right? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, going through the documentation, one thing that really jumped out at me was this thing called plate solving. Plate solving. Yeah, it sounds complicated. It does sound a little intimidating. It is a bit, but basically the software looks at the stars in your image and uses them as like reference points, almost mm -hmm. like a celestial fingerprint. You know, and that's how it figures out exactly where your camera is pointing in the sky. Ah, so it's like GPS, but for your telescope. Exactly, exactly. That's got to be so useful for getting those really long exposures, right? Totally. See, with better tracking because of the plate solving, you can do those long exposures and not get those annoying star trails. Think about trying to capture the faint stuff in a nebula, for example. You need those longer exposures. And now with ABP, it's way easier to do that with just the Polaris. And from what I'm seeing, it sounds like this setup could even be an alternative to much more expensive equipment like that ZWO Asia Air. Mm, yeah, yeah, it's kind of amazing. But the thing is, you can do it all with free software like Nina. It really seems like a game changer, especially for people who are just getting started with astrophotography. For sure. Features like autofocusing, which used to be a manual pain, are automatic now. And on top of that, ABP adds multi-point alignment for crazy precise tracking. That's usually something you only see on the really high-end setups. Wow. Yeah. You know, when I first saw autofocusing and it was listed as a feature, I was like, well, my camera already does that. Right. But reading through what people are saying in the Venerable Players Facebook group, yeah. people are saying this autofocus with ABP is even better than the autofocus on their fancy DSLR lenses. It's really incredible what this developer has been able to do. They just get it. You know, the specific things that make astrophotography so challenging. Mm -hmm. And it's not just about the tech either. It's really cool to see how the community has come together around this project. Absolutely. Sharing knowledge, working together. Yeah. It's really a great example of collaboration. Yeah. And speaking of the community, the Facebook group is just buzzing with excitement i bet someone even said it's like the kickstarter they actually funded because oh. i thought was funny yeah i saw that but yeah people are just blown away by what abp is letting them do a lot of them are getting results they never thought possible especially with a star tracker that's supposed to be you know more entry level like the polaris that's amazing and you know that actually brings us to another important part of this whole deep dive the documentation. Oh, yeah. It's really well written. It's not just about showing off the features. It's also about giving people the tools to solve problems. Right. Like there are these really detailed troubleshooting guides and workarounds for common problems. Yeah. And they're really specific, which I appreciate. Sure. I mean, it's not like everything's perfect, right? Yeah. Like they do mention that the players can be a little finicky sometimes when you're getting it set up. Right. And there's some talk about Wi-Fi issues occasionally. Of course, yeah. You're yeah. always going to have those little quirks. But the thing is, it seems like for pretty much every problem, the developer has already found a fix and shared it. Exactly. And often with help from other people in the community. I mean, that's the beauty of open source, right? Well, it's not yeah. just about getting the software itself. It's about tapping into this whole network of people who are passionate about the same thing. Mm. It's pretty inspiring when you think about it. It really is. This commitment to making it accessible to everyone, even when they're talking about the challenges. Yeah. It just shows how dedicated the developer is. Yeah. And it doesn't stop there either. They're already working on more advanced stuff for the future. Really? Yeah. Like what? Well, one of the things they mentioned in the release notes is auto-guiding. Auto-guiding. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so for people who don't know, auto-guiding. 
that's some next level astrophotography stuff. It does sound pretty intense. Auto guiding, huh? Yes. With a Benro Polaris. Yeah. It just seems like, I don't know, a whole other level. It really is, yeah. So picture this. You've got your Polaris. It's tracking the stars. Right. But even the tiniest little wobble can mess up your image if you're doing a super long exposure. Yeah, that makes sense. Auto guiding is like the next step. Mm -hmm. You use a second telescope, a smaller one called a guide scope, and you fix it on one specific star. And then it makes these tiny adjustments in real time so your main camera stays locked on perfectly. Wow. It's like having like a co-pilot for your telescope, making sure you're always pointed in the right direction. That's a great way to put it. It's just amazing to me how they've taken this device that was meant for pretty basic tracking. And I don't know. It's like they've unlocked this whole other level. Totally. It really shows you what's possible when people start thinking outside the box. This developer saw what the Benro Polaris could be, not just what it was. And then combined with the whole open source thing where everyone's sharing and collaborating, yeah. it's really remarkable what they've achieved. You know, this whole deep dive has got me thinking, yeah. what other gadgets are out there just waiting for someone to come along and unlock their potential? That's the exciting part. It's not even just about astrophotography. Right. This project shows what happens when you have people who are passionate, willing to work together, and not afraid to get creative. It can lead to some amazing results. Absolutely. So if you're listening to this and you're feeling that little spark, that urge to tinker and explore and see what's possible, mm -hmm. don't ignore it. Dive in. Get involved. Yeah. yeah. Who knows? Maybe we'll be doing a deep dive on your groundbreaking project someday. Now that would be something.